for the kind of things they want to do, if it was someone who was in a hostel, the next thing they want is to live alone somewhere in the flat. So I see several cases of people who at some point they want to move out to the flat. Some may move out with someone or may move with somebody and then they would at some point decide or create a scenario, their subconscious will create something that will make them split up from their roommate. Issues that are not supposed to be issues or issues that are resolvable suddenly seem unresolvable. I don't want anything. I don't understand anybody. You know, like, you know I'm in my 40th or in my third year, so I don't know how can I live with somebody who is first year or second year. You can't live with, a, with your friend or same-sex um, friend. A fellow girl like you who is first year or part fact, but you are literally living with a boy who is your junior. Also from the same part fact of first year. You sleep in a boy's house. The boy sleeps in your house. You had a problem sleeping with or in, staying in the same house or room with a person who was going to be your roommate. But you don't mind living with a boy. Hallelujah. So I'm showing you the patterns. I'm saying this so that you don't get naive when your mind starts tricking you. Sometimes I've seen folks whom I advise, you know, don't go to flat. You are not mature enough for flat. You are here in the hostel, boys are hitting at you, you can't say no. If you go to flat, they will just finish you. They are hunters. They see you alone. Ha. People who never used to greet you will greet you. People who never commented on your WhatsApp status will comment. People who never, you know, wrote you on Snapchat will suddenly write you. They'll ask you out. And you really go out. Are you hungry? Tap your neighbor and say, are you hungry? Listen, let me say this. <coughs> when, I, when we were growing up, Pastor Gibson, I, I believe it, you too, I mean, when we were growing up, we were taught to have some, I don't call it common sense, but some standard. It's not everybody who asks you out that you go out with. Someone will take you for dinner, for lunch. Oh, come on. It's <laughs> so nice. We're going out. We're going out. You're so naive. You're so what? It's not everybody who asks you out that you go out with. Bit by bit, the walls have been broken. It's not everybody who asks you out that you go out with, whether it's daytime or night. There's some of you, you have never refused somebody's, somebody's um, outing. All you need to do is ask. At your command, just ask and I'm coming. Someone asks you out doesn't mean you have to say yes. Don't be naive. The gift of a man makes way for him. Tell anybody the gift of a man makes way for him. So the first time he paid, he, he took you out. And then he paid. When it was your birthday, he bought you something nice. You know you have known him for a short time. Those you have known for a long time have not bought you the kind of gift he is buying you. And you think they are the ones who don't value you, not knowing that this guy is on a mission. Are you in this church? Just because someone buys you something crazy does not mean the person cares for you. All he may want may just be your body. Come on. And before you know it, you start looking down on your friends because you think, you know, it was my birthday, they didn't buy me anything very nice. You know, look at this one that I've not even known for a long time. In fact, I need you in my life, Jerry. I need you in my life. It 
A wise person, listen to me, a wise person, when you see that, it should be a red flag. Those days, those days are more that some people used to say, oh, but why did you get this from me? But this is unnecessary. Oh, these days, no. <laughs> that's, that's it for you. You don't care where it's from. Oh my gosh, you won't believe it. Look at what this person gave me. You say, you know, and you keep anonymous. <laughs> Gift from anonymous. I'm talking about being naive. Because look at this. I'm showing you trends. You were supposed to, the Bible says, a wise man will anticipate evil. You were supposed to see the trend. You were supposed to what? That this person is on a mission. Why would you invest so much? Our relationship does not work this. Don't lie to yourself. He doesn't know me that well. She doesn't know me that well. Why would she do this much? There's got to be something behind this. He puts up your defenses. Because now, as he's giving those gifts, something is buying his way into your heart. Before he could tell you, I'm coming over to your place. Can I come over to your place at 11 o'clock? And you're like, no, 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 sorry, please. I don't receive visitors at this time. But now, because he has booked you, you start lowering your standards. Time will not allow me to talk of rape cases that I have seen or heard of. Not far, I'm not talking of somewhere in Africa, in Nigeria, even in this same city. And when you look at the trends, you see, and I mean this not in a disrespectful way, but sometimes we need to tell the truth. I know the victim, he's hurt and traumatizing, but sometimes when you look at it, you see there was trends. If you were smarter and wiser, it was never supposed to happen. We're not blaming you, but there were trends. Maybe you never knew, so that's why we're teaching it. Because suddenly the guy feels like you owe him something. The Bible says the, 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 the borrower is subject to the lender. And so what he tells you or what he wants to do, he's able to do because you were not careful enough. Learn to say no to some gifts. Learn to say no to some invites. Learn to not use some gifts. Someone can give you a gift and you just keep it. Keep it. Sometimes six months, seven months, even a year. Just keep it. No strings attached. You're not cheap. Don't be naive. When a guy tells you, you know, like... Um, I want to I want to see you, you know. Middle of the night. Even in the day. Look, look, let me say this. Let me say this. I tell some people, I say, I say so you know this guy is living alone. Yes. And you went to his place. Hey? Eh? Me, I don't understand it. And you entered his place. This thing, you people couldn't talk about it outside. You couldn't talk about it downstairs or on the phone. In this technology of video calls. Why must you be alone with him? Even if it is 10 a.m. or 2 p.m. in the afternoon. Not to talk about night. Tablet your neighbor say you are no longer three years old. You are no longer three years old. In fact, even three years old are not safe in this generation. Not to talk about someone as cute and like you. Amen. You can feel in the, the blank face. Praise God. Amen. Some of you are as pretty as you are. You don't think you are dangerous. You are dangerous. You are dangerous for yourself. You are dangerous to the person who is looking at you. I personally, I have some well-defined boundaries. Some of which I talk about, some of them I teach about, some of them I preach about intentionally. What stops you from having some? Why are we telling you? Uh, so, uh, <coughs> <coughs> so, you know, he was at my place. I don't know what happened. You know, like, you know, and then 
he just left off and I didn't want to wake him. He's not sleeping. He was never sleeping. <laughs> he will not sleep. <laughs> No. <laughs> he was not sleeping. <laughs> ah, this people. Yeah, I didn't want to disturb him. I didn't want to wake him. So that's why I just left him there. So when I went to my room, as I was in my room sleeping, the next day I saw someone just came. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? What is wrong with you? Ga 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 ga. Wake up! I've called a taxi. I've called a taxi. Nobody sleeps in my house, so ah no 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 please you have overstayed. You have overstayed. No, please, please, please. Tomorrow, uh, you have explanation. No problem. Tomorrow we'll talk. Just first go, eh? Go, go, first go. You are, you are the nicest person in the whole world. I didn't want to disturb him. So you know I had to let him sleep. You know. Your unwillingness to disturb others is what is costing your own, disto dis your own disturbance. You are okay to disturb yourself, but you don't want to disturb him. You are not disturbing him, it's your house. So I went over to his place, and we were calling taxi, calling taxi, and there was no taxi. I didn't find taxi to go. So I said, okay, let me just stay at the place over the night. Eh? <laughs> what naivety is this? What presumption? What is this thing you say you're an adult, but you can't think? Amen. Better to walk home that night. Eh? Some of you, you don't have, you don't know, you don't, you see that's what I'm saying? You're not, you don't sound serious. You don't, you're not serious. Some of you are not serious. I'm sorry to say, but it's the truth. You're not serious about anything. You can't continue like that. You're not three years old anymore. A three year old is being violated and abused sexually. Now, not about a grown up like you. With another person, a grown up too. What? Angels should come from heaven. You didn't hear what Job said. I built I, angels surround me. Angels surround me. I surround myself with angels. Nothing will happen to me this night. Nobody will come here. Like seriously. That's not how angels work. I said something one time. I said, you need all four kinds of wisdom. You need to, sometimes you need to learn to think like the thief. Amen. Amen. You have a friend who every time the friend wants to talk to you or the person wants to talk to you, it's always late at night. Always late at night. Always. 24 hours in a day. The person will call you only at night. 10, 11, 12, 1. 2, people are still talking. 3. What are you talking about? It happened once. It happened twice. It happened three times. You want to apply break? There are no walls. Tell about build walls. Build walls. Build walls. Intentional walls. Hallelujah. You're talking with someone and the person is asking you questions. Very detailed, intimate questions. You're not wondering why is he asking. Uh, so have you ever had sex before? Oh well, yeah, yeah. Some time back, you know, it's been a while now, you know. Oh, okay, me too. <sighs> That's where the talk end. You didn't ask why he's asking. 
You didn't think, why is he asking? Uh, next day. Uh, so you, what do you think about, you know, protected and unprotected sex? Uh, well, for me, Sha, uh, 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 <laughs> me too, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> At the end. You didn't ask why he's asking. You didn't think why he's asking. Next time. Uh, do you have condom in your house? Oh well, actually, uh, I always try to make sure I always have around. Sure, 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 sure. Me too. <laughs> oh, blind leading the blind. By the four, the puzzle has been put together. Where no vision is, the people perish. There's inability to think. To think deep. What is this? <sighs> Hallelujah. Amen. Tell your neighbor, don't be, don't be naive. Tell your neighbor, suspect everybody. Suspect including me. Derek Prince said, I was talking the other day. So he was preaching. He said, he said, one day, one of his pastors, normally they have a strict rule in their ministry. You know, men are never supposed to counsel women. So one day, one of his pastors, because there was no, it was a serious situation and there was no other replacement. So the man had to be counsel, had to counsel a woman. And he, Joseph Prince, sorry, not Derek Prince, Joseph Prince. And he, while he was outside, things were taking long. Time was going. Things was taking long. And he, as the head pastor, he called the wife of the man. He said, uh, put, your eye, manage, put your eye on your husband. You know, like, oh, no, 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 I trust him. I trust him. That's what she said. <laughs> he looked at her. You trust him. <laughs> he said, anyway, I have told my wife not to trust me. I've told her to manage me. As a pastor of a huge mega church, some of you, you trust foolishly. Pastor say, come and see me. 12 o'clock, you're just going, <laughs> pastor. <laughs> With yourself like that. It's funny. Sometimes you're not even wearing underwear. You're not wearing anything. Oh, you're just going like me. Pastor, pastor. That's pastor. Not to talk about brother. So I'm going, I'm just going to his room to take something. I'm just going to his room to take something. Just go to his room, take something. Take something. You're taking. You're still taking things. <laughs> the thing I'm taking, we have not seen it. Yet. I still taking. <laughs> you are receiving a visitor. Someone is coming to visit you. You will not dress up properly. <laughs> Thank you for amen. I'm still preaching good. You're not dressed properly. Cover up properly. Yeah, you're in your home. You were alone or in your room and you were alone. And there was nobody. It's hot. It's summer. So you dress the way you like. Someone is coming now. Hey! It doesn't take long to see and not forget. Either your small, mini, or what do you call it? Bomb shot. You think you are still three years old? Tap your number. You are not three years old anymore. <laughs> Even three years old have been, have, been, have been violated. With yourself like that, with everything. You don't be going anything. <laughs> Even holy men can get in trouble. <laughs> Behave yourself. Guys, you too. Don't be naive and presumptuous and assume, you know, like, you know, like, like what are you talking about? 
Angels came from heaven because of women. Angels. Oh boy, he's a pastor. He's my pastor. I just look at you. Are you, are you, are you high? He's a pastor. He's my pastor. That's why pastors are getting in trouble. Because they themselves foolishly also trust themselves. Don't trust yourself. Me, I don't trust myself. I don't trust myself. Maybe you don't know. I don't trust myself. That's why I build walls. You have no business in me in my room. You have no business. You should already know that. When you come, you stop at the door. So, next. <laughs> you, you think you are a chairman. You are above all. You are okay. Pastor is careful. You, you don't want to be careful. Tell anybody, be careful. Be careful. God's goodness and God's grace has been upon my life sexually. Not because I was careless, but I was intentionally, intentional. I took intentional steps. I took intentional steps. I'll share it. Let me share one or two. You know, <coughs> when, I, when I first learned, in fact, before you learn, even some of you without learning, it's a problem for you already. When I first learned, Lent, when I first knew that I knew how to speak Ukrainian language very well, I knew there was trouble. My trouble eh, is, is, I know some of you don't know, but my trouble is at least nine times your trouble. Every language I speak is a problem. Every extra language is an extra problem. You won't understand. The same way it's is also a problem. It's a deep statement. When I, when I first knew that I could speak Ukrainian language very well and Russian, I knew that there was going to be trouble. I shared with you the story the other day about the Ukrainian lady who said she was coming to seduce me. I thought it was a joke until she was naked in front of me. In fact, it was one of the reasons I moved into the hostel. It was what? Good. And I love that part, and I was sharing with one of the daughters the other day. I said, I love that part every time when a lady is hitting at me, for example, a Ukrainian lady, and they ask you, where do you live? I love this look on their face when I tell them the hostel. It's like you just poet market. What are you doing in hostel? I said, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Now, please watch this. I'm talking about being intentional. I made intentional steps to avoid some troubles. Here is for man, he left. The other day, not too long, a few days ago, I think, and I was telling Shelly him, we are downstairs, we are outside when we had a flood in his, uh, up here. There were some Ukrainian guests who came to, who they were just manifesting. From upstairs, somewhere up here. I saw them when they intentionally kicked their slippers from up down he oh, it came down from like seventh floor came down like oh we are sorry i saw you when you did it <laughs> oh my name is what is your name they're like this is, and then like that and then i look at them hormones all i could see is hormones And the next thing is, you know, like, you know, it was Pastor Emmanuel, and Pastor Emmanuel is tall, you know, so these uh, are like, like tall guys. You know, I don't know if you understood, if you understood their language, you know. They're just hitting, and I'm like, um, uh, hey, can we invite you over for coffee? <laughs> we know that lines. I'm not naive, I'm not a baby. I've been here a long time, I've seen it a long time. Can I invite you over for coffee? What, for me? You know me. <laughs> Do you know me? Why are you inviting me for coffee? Another person will be happy. Oh, coffee, yeah, let's come for coffee. That's what I'm talking about. Why are you so naive? I'm like, no, 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 it's fine. We're busy right now. They're still working. I have to be with the man up here. So, you know, like, when I have time, where do you say? Say someone floor. I say, okay, fine, I'll come. You know, like, so it's okay. You know. Next day, see again. Hey, from afar, she's doing like this. <laughs> okay. You don't know me 
from anywhere. And they went downstairs outside here at the, at, the, at the entrance, the PDS. Like, um, you know, she's like, show me her passport. She needs a black guy. She can get a black guy. Just looking. Some of you, you will say you have hit jackpot. No, no, it is pot that has hit you. I shared with you again the other day. I'm talking about being intentional. Intention, tell me what be intentional. Yeah. I shared with you the other day I was coming. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. I'm, I'm coming. I'm coming here. I think that the, you know, Pastor Gibson met me up here. And I'm coming on the road and I told you, I, I, you know, I'll skip that part. I met a certain person I had not seen in a long time who was married. And, you know, she divorced within nine years and other things. You know, I could see the way she was acting and responding. I told you this thing. I think it was on a Friday. Saturday. You should see Miss calls. Guess what? I didn't pick. Anyway, it's okay not to pick some calls. It's okay not to pick some calls. It's okay not to pick some calls. You pick the call, you know, like, I don't know if he's disturbing me. What does he want, Joe? Hello? <laughs> no, I don't understand you. Hello? He's just there talking. I just put it on speaker and I went about my business. Why are you communicating with the serpent? Not being naive. We didn't get here only by praying in tongues. Are you in this church? We didn't get here only by praying in tongues. You have to be intentional. In my years in ministry, I said to someone, I said, if not that God has been gracious to me and God helped me to define and know my left from my right, I said, if I were just like any and every other man of God, let's be on our feet. Some of you have listened to the message today now. You are excited. You are blessed. But the real wisdom is in your ability to leave from this church and go home and work with the resources we have given you to make clear boundaries for your life. Am I talking to somebody? To make what? Clear boundaries for your life. See, he kissed me. Where? In class? No. Where? On the road? No. Where? Hey, you know, hey. Somewhere there was a, there was what? There was a place, there was an unconducive atmosphere that necessitated or warranted or supported it. Let me tell you this, I, I need to say before I conclude. Some of you, you don't know how much you are worth and you don't know how valued you are. There's a man, there's a woman out there who God has ordained for you. Who waiting is worth it. Waiting for him or her is worth it. Apply break to that thing. That thing that he's doing is doing everybody. Else. Are you in this church? He's doing everybody. Tell anybody he's doing everybody. Yeah. Including Pastor Gibson Including and Pastor Iria. Pastor Iria. <laughs> I know you don't know this. Some of you is like revelation. What I just said now is word. But he's doing everybody. Some of you won't believe it. I know sometimes when I'm talking to some people and I'm telling them I'm a human being, I can see in their face they don't believe I'm a human being. They don't believe. They think I'm Superman. I fly above all things. 
<laughs> I'm joking. I'm just as human as you are. But God's grace and goodness worked out has kept us. Hallelujah. It will keep you too. It will keep you too. I pray for you that you will not be a hearer of this word only. But you'll be a doer of the same. That regardless of what your experience and your past has been, there will be a turnaround in the name of Jesus. Uh, where you have been weak before, you have been strong now. Because the grace of God is sufficient for you. I pray for you to receive strength and boldness to pull yourself back from wherever you have put yourself into before. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where you have made mistakes. I see yourself, I see you correcting it in Jesus' holy name. I pray that you begin to know yourself for who you really are. No more low self-esteem. I pray for you that your past will not be a haunt or an excuse for you. It will not haunt you in Jesus' name. May God help you to stand out, not just because of yourself, but because of the church. The church of God needs people who can stand. I pray that you will be a burning and a shining light indeed, in the name of Jesus Christ. Like Jesus was a light, you too will be a light. In Jesus' holy name.